Governor, High Excellency Bishop Salin Bachok, that's what we call her. Our Deputy Governor, the Area MCA and members of the County Assembly present. The members of the County Executive who are here with us. Chief Principal and the entire SOT Technical Institute and staff. The President of the Students and your Council. Nakada Regional Manager Robert Olweni, DCC Ruben Ratemo, OCPD Etiang John, CIPU Commander Samson Gekunda, DCIO Norman Magoko, the sub county security teams and chiefs, Buana Asifiwe. Praise the Lord. Simade Ameland, Munaona Aje, Mokoro Ako Aje, Ameza, Namimi Nikiu Angalia Naona Mkosawa Pia. Mimi ni Pastor Dokas, Rigadi, Namimi Nikiu Angalia Naona Mnini Mkosawa Kabisa Kibao. And in a letter, salamu, the president, Dr. William Samoy Ruto, the deputy president, Munamujua, you the to the truthful man, the one and only Rigiji, Rigadi Gashagwa, Namimi ni mama wa my boys. Ninajua ni kisema ivo, my girls, wanaona wivu kidogo. Lakini gao cha odinyinji muko wasawa wa Kila mtu wanaongea juu yenu Affirmative action yenu Baba anakuita baby kabu hapa Kijana nambio we <laughs> Kwa hivyo ni razi matuangalie uyu boy child Ningetaka kusoma kutoka Unajua mimi ni pasta Kwa hivyo kabla jaongea ni lazima hapa mungu ambaye anakaa Sini razi matuseme neno lake. Proverbs 31 verse 1 to 7. And I will read very quickly. I know this rain will hold until I finish. Because I have the power and authority to stop it. The saying of the king Ramuel. An inspired utterance his mother taught him. And these ones I'm now talking to my boy children. Listen, my son, listen, my son of my womb. Listen, my son, the answer to my prayers. Do not spend your strength on women. You are vigor on those who ruin kings. It is not for kings, Ramuel. It is not for kings to drink wine. Not for the rulers to crave beer. Least they drink and they forget what has been decreed and deprive all the oppressed of their rights. Let beer be for those who are perishing and wine for those who are in anguish. Let them drink and forget their poverty and remember their misery no more. So beer and wine and women they will destroy you, my son. You must be careful how you use those three. And I want to pray for you because that is what has destroyed men since in memorial. It is what has brought men to where they are today. It is what that has destroyed homes. It has destroyed marriages. It has destroyed countries. And now it is destroying continents. I don't know what about this demonic agenda that is destroying my boy children. And I stand here as a mother to tell you, I will push you out of that space until I see you rise to be kings, to be priests, to be fathers, to be leaders, and to be men of power and substance. That is my pur uh, purpose, and that is my vision to dignify the life 
of a boy child. And I can tell you, I love you, boy children. You don't even know how to say you love me back. Surely. I love you. Yes. And don't be ashamed to love your mother. A mother is somebody who nurtures the children, their dreams, and their vision. And I've risen this time as a mother to make sure I become your protector. When they say anything against men, I rise and I say it is not so. When they don't give you equal opportunities, I demand that you be given equal opportunities. But also to speak to you that you may have a mindset that makes you look like kings, like leaders, like fathers, like men of power. Because when I look at you, you are so handsome. Now why do you want to destroy yourself? When I look all of you around here, and this is a county, my governor, you have a great potential. This is the future. When I look all around our young people, young people, our country is full of youthful people, 65%. And you are the future for this country. You are the future uh, economic drivers. You cannot afford to waste your time. You cannot op or, 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 uh, waste your opportunity. And I know God is going to bless you. When you see the rain sitting there, it's because God wants to bless you. The boy child, I want you to say, when I say boy child, you say the seed carrier. When I say boy child, you say the father. You, when I say boy child, you say the leader. When I say boy child, you say the priest. When I say the boy child, you say the future. We are prophesying concerning our boy children and their future. So boy child, seed carrier. Boy child, the father. Boy child, boy child, the priests. Boy child, the future. If only you can be able to know that you are the seed carrier, you are the leader, you are the father, and you are the priest and the future, you will take your life very seriously. And before I get into my speech, can we stand? I want you to pray for yourselves, together with my girl children, because this is very serious. If this country is going to see a new dispensation, if we are going to see a new era, we must see God moving in your lives, and you must take care of yourselves. Do not allow beer and wine men and women to destroy you because even you girls if you are not careful my boy children will come for you yes and you not even finish your school you'll be having children before you are through and therefore we pray go before god and pray i have seen you here we have christian union in this place you know how to pray do you know how to pray in tongues? Now you will go before God and start praying. I want to hear whether you know how to pray. I'm an intercessor. I must intercede. And I must intercede for this, uh, this technical institute because it's an institute of excellence. So go to God and start praying. Our Father and our God. Is this how... You pray. Open your mouth and pray. Pray in the language you know. Pray for yourself. Our Father and our God, we just want to thank you. We glorify you, our Lord and our God. This country, Jehovah Father, belongs to you. This institute, Jehovah Father, belongs to you. I look at the gifts that you have given to us, O oh God, and I say they are marvelous before our eyes, O oh God.
These are arrows that we are going to shoot, oh God, in every direction, Jehovah. And the Kenya will be different. Kenya will never be the same again because the future stands here with us. Our Lord and our God, I look and I see, oh God, a future that is great. I see you giving them a second chance, oh Jehovah Father. I see you lifting them, oh dear God. I see them turning, their lives turning around, oh God. I see them in the future, Jehovah. And Lord God Almighty, these are men and women of power in the name of Jesus. These are the, uh, the changers of the world, history makers, oh God. I know that, Lord God Almighty, as we stand here, oh dear God, and as I have read your word, oh Jehovah, I pray that, Father God, the cast of it is it beer, oh God, even beer and women and even men, oh God, immorality shall not be in this land in the mighty name of Jesus. There will be righteousness, there will be favor of God. And I pray that from this day henceforth, O oh God, the presence of God shall be upon this institution. I pray for knowledge, O oh Jehovah God, that is given for you, O oh God. I pray for revelation knowledge that causes them to see, O oh God, even in the supernatural, in the mighty name of Jesus. I pray for understanding. I pray for wisdom. I pray for the counsel of the Spirit of the living God. I pray that the Lord God Almighty will take his place in this place oh Jehovah Father in their going out you be their God in their coming in you shall be their God in the fear of the Lord shall they gain true wisdom in the name of Jesus I pray tonight oh Jehovah Father that you will raise a generation oh God that you be able to go out there oh dear God as they are bystanders of God for they have sought you first oh God may you provide for them everything oh God that they desire for the expectations of the righteous shall never be cut short and therefore today we stand oh God with our hands lifted towards heaven oh God may favor descend upon this institution the students, oh Jehovah Father, I pray for the lecturers, oh Jehovah Father. I pray, oh God, for the chief principal, oh God, and his staff in the name of Jesus. For I know, dear Lord, what we ask, we are given. And you say, those who love their God, they shall do great and mighty exploits. May such a technical institute become such an institution. May the beauty of the Lord be upon it. May miraculous things happen in this in this uh, institute so that father you may be glorified and you may be lifted up for we pray this in Jesus name with thanksgiving and you say Amen. you may be seated now when you sit there you may think that uh, the challenges you are going through people have never gone through but I want to speak to you when you see me praying and when you see me always very serious with the students and coming to give you mentorship and coming to encourage you is because somebody encouraged me and caused me not to ever lose hope. My father died when I was very young and my mother was left a widow with eight children, four boys and four girls. And in two years, things had really gone south. The shamba that our father had left us was sold and we were left destitute. And because my father was an orphan, we didn't have anywhere to go. So we went to the side, to the grandmother on my mother's side. Our uncles did not want us. We were too many and I can understand it. Because when we went to our grandmother, eight children, four boys, and that's why I pray and I always feel for boys. They did not mind the four girls, but they minded the four boys because they thought they would come to inherit their land. And therefore, they asked our grandmother to send us away. And because we didn't have somewhere to go, we stayed in a chicken pen outside my grandmother's house. And out there for seven months, it was so cold, we lost one of our sister from pneumonia. In that chicken pen, I can tell you, 
we had diggers because you are sleeping with chicken and they would eat you from the hill and you would not be able to, wo uh, to walk and because we did not have clothes to wear we went to the metal box that our father had left and each one of us got a shirt from there and we used to wear a shirt each took a shirt and that shirt we would wear it from Monday to Sunday and on Sunday when other people go to church we will go and we go to the river we remove our clothes our shirts we wash them and wait for them to dry and then we would go back because we were working as maids for our uncles and the people in the village. We used to go and fetch water. At that time, we were selling 30 cents. And we were doing this so that we could be able to survive. After being eaten by this uh, rice in the body, some were black on, in the hair, others were white in the, in the shirts, and we couldn't even be able to use our hands to our nails to be able to kill them. So you'd go behind the that house and remove it and fold it and use your teeth to do justice. So I don't think you have any problem if I, you are weighed against what the challenges that we went through. We did not even have school fees. But I went, we went through our primary school, we went through secondary school, I went to Alliance, I went to KU, I'm a graduate, I was employed in a bank, I retired in 2006. So there is a God who can change your life if you are righteous and you remain focused and you use your time properly. Do not deviate. Do not get out of divine alignment. Otherwise, the devil and his agenda will destroy you. Had we gone that way, perhaps I will not be here. Had we given up hope, perhaps I will not be talking to you. And I know that God kept us. We went through those challenges. But today, I'm able to give this testimony and many people get encouraged. 40 years ago, if you are crapping, crap. 40 years ago, I was a student in a college at Kenyatta University, just like you. I, fa I faced similar challenges with you, uh, or, or with what you are encouraging or, or encountering today. Financially, I was trained because I was from a single, uh, not a single parent, but from a widow household. And we lived in a ghetto in Kiandutu, Thika. I don't know whether you know it. I grew up in a ghetto. That has not stopped me from moving from a ghetto and staying in a good uh, neighborhood of Karen. And I went there a long time ago. I didn't come because we are in presidency. I have lived in Karen from 1994. So God can change and switch your life and make it very different. But you must also work hard. Because God will bless the work of your hands and God will bless your studies if you are going to study. You cannot just come here and waste your time. There are two things that I tell people you must never waste. One of them is time. The other one is chance. When those two, you waste them. Because what you do with your time, the decisions that you make within a span of a second could save you, could make you succeed, or you could just fail, die, and never succeed. Success is constituted by the decisions you make using your time. The other one is the chance. You have a chance in this beautiful and wonderful institute where God lives. If God lives here, then you should be some of the greatest men and women that are going to influence the whole world. If God is who I know and is the one I'm testifying about, 
If he is there, I pray for you that you don't live here without the power of the Almighty God. Those who move with God, they find themselves in great places. For those who love their God, they shall do great and mighty exploits. I said my mother was a widow and we had many pressing needs. But when you look at me right now, my life journey can, can tell you there is hope for anyone who trusts in the Lord. Today I want to speak about hope because when you hope, God will always make a way where there seems to be none. Never ever lose hope and never ever give up. Your parents may not have an opportunity to come here. Your big brother and your sister may not have the opportunity to come here. Maybe they may not have the uh, experience, uh, uh, experience and the challenges you are, going, uh, you are going through. However, as a mother in this nation and my experience in life, I will try to give you a balanced view of what to expect because I have lived low and have also lived up where I am. Like Martin Ruther, uh, Martin Ruther said, I can say, I can see a light at the end of the tunnel. I came to bring a linkage between where you are right now and where God wants to, to, you to be. Because personally, as a pastor, I know where God wants you to be. And it is a better place than the one you even think. Because you have never seen it. You have never even imagined. Neither have you ever even prayed for it. Because that plan of God is above you. What you think, what you pray, and what you ask. And therefore, when I see you, I see a bright future. And you can see God is confirming it. For you to reach this bright future, there are some things you must look f f out for. These things you, will make or break you. First, you are the star in this movie and series, your life. In the Hollywood and in the Norwood movies, which I know you watch, <laughs> the star never dies. Is that not correct? Sometimes I used to, when we were in Alliance, they used to bring us this James Bond. This guy, <laughs> he never died. And he used to have all manner of tricks. Even his pen was a gun everywhere. He would fly like a superman and everything. He dies, he resurrects. That is what I want you to believe. You are the star of your movie and I know if you are not intoxicated with beer, I would like you to intoxicate yourself with the vision of yourself in success. And the moment you will, you'll do that, you will never say die. Say, I will never say die. <laughs> this should not happen. I, I pray that uh, the youth who I have seen around, and let me tell you about this drugs and substance abuse. Since I came to the office, and that's why you see I keep talking about it day after day. I've gone to the dens in Mombasa, and I found 99% are boy children there. They have injected themselves. Some of them, if you see them, they are like zombies. They have injected themselves. They have wounds everywhere. There was this particular one. And he caught my attention. And as a mother, I have never, that image, it's still in my mind. And I can't sleep. And I can't stop telling you to stop this thing. He had injected his legs. He had injected his hands. And he was using now the injections through the chest. And this is a child of somebody. I pray that you will not get there. When we spoke with them,
And I brought my bishop there. When we went with them, my bishop, you know, he had not seen these kind of things. You know, sometimes you, you start like a joke. You smoke, you go, you are trying to show that you are mature and you are blowing that smoke. <laughs> my children, be careful. Because the moment you take that bangy once, twice, you take that uh, drug once, twice, by the, that time you are hooked. And after that you are a sick person. That boy said they started because he was with the wrong company. And this boy had dropped from the university. Now he's nothing and he's heading for grave. As a pastor, I don't know how many people I have buried. And I can tell you, even in my family, we have buried brothers out of this alcohol and drug abuse. And so when you see me standing here, I'm talking of something that I know. Please, don't go there. I'm trying to get your brothers out of the gutters. I'm trying to rearrange their destinies and to take them back to their dreams and their hope. I don't want you to come and feel that space. That's why I am here. And you can see I am serious. Don't you think so? I am very serious. Because I love you and I don't want you in a casket. I don't want you dead. I want you alive and I want you prosperous. I know. Those who sell those uh, poisons to you, they are trying to make money. How I pray that you make them poor, those people. <laughs> and we are serving them notice. Any person who sells those poisons, they are murderers. And we are praying. And one of these days, these uh, businesses, they are doing, they can do something else. They can't, it cannot be that people are going to sit there and sell poisons to our children, kill other people's children, and we watch and we see a generation perish because people want to make money. What kind of money is that? That is evil and wicked money. And I think as parents, we want to say sorry to you because we didn't bring you up well to be able to face up with the challenges of the world. But today I am coming and rising as a mother, speaking to you and pleading with you, please don't get to alcohol or drug abuse. If I should take you to those dens, you will never even touch those beers. You will not even touch any of those wines. You will never touch bangi. Because those ones now, we are trying to get them out. We are taking them to the rehab, and you have seen we have graduated like 200 now. And the least we have is 30,000. And those are only the ones we have screened. And it is not across the world, uh, across Kenya. It is only maybe Mombasa, Mount Kenya, and now the Western. I'm fine. So, I am asking you, please, my children, do not touch drugs. Do you promise me to try? Why are you looking at me like you th think I may sound archaic, but let me tell you, when it gets there, my friends, you will not want to go there. My children, will you stop it? Yes. Will you stop it? And I know God will bless you. I don't want to speak about many things. Many of the young people have been in prison. You boy children, you are full there. We are burying you. And that is why I'm saying this is a satanic agenda. How is it that the boy child now is under attack of substance abuse? Sijui muna kunywa muna weka tembe mutu anakuwa kama zombie na mukosawa. Please stop it. Your mothers are crying. The nation is standing still. The economy of this country, it's as a standstill. We have so many people 
living with disabilities now because of this beer, because of these wines, because of this bangi. As you go tra traveling across the, 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 the globe with your, <laughs> with, with your motorbike, do you know right now in every hospital we have a motorbike kind of uh, a ward? And those are young people, the future of this nation. I plead with you, my children, stop it. And I ask again, please, please, God bless you.